Hi, I'm Rich. And I'm Casey. And we're talking about studying for the Iowa Commercial Pesticide Applicator Test. We're studying Category 3, Subcategory, Ornamental and Turf, so the 3OT. And why do we need the ornamental portion? Um, it allows us to get a reciprocator's license in Nebraska and South Dakota and also to stay in Iowa. All right. And so we, could, we can treat ornamentals. Ornamentals are like plants and trees around the house and, of course, turf. Mm. So you're going to start by talking about integrated pest management. Yep. Right? Integrated pest management, also known as IPM. Um, is a system that not only controls existing pests, but also prevents establishments of pests and recurring pests. Um, one of the things that we can do for an uh, integrated pest management system is cultural control. And that includes uh, the selection of seed or sod, preparation and establishment of procedures, the maintenance such as mowing, fertilizing, and irrigating. Um, also with controlling turf problems such as thatch and soil compact Chin, uh, turf wear, heating, <coughs> and excessive shade are also important to cultural control. Okay, good. So integrated pest management really means we're taking into account everything that's going on. We're not relying on pesticides or any one thing, but we're looking at the lawn, in this case, as a, as a system that has got different inputs, and we should look at all the inputs, the water, the mowing, the other environmental impacts, the the seed, pesticides, the whole picture, and that will give us an integrated pest management mm -hmm. approach. So selecting seed and sod for our, our lawn are important. Uh, Kentucky bluegrass is the, the plant that we normally associate with turf grass in Iowa. Uh, Kentucky bluegrass needs to be mowed high, and it's fairly low maintenance. Creeping bent grass is another one. Creeping. Yeah. yeah, we use that on our uh, greens for our golf courses because we can mow it really short. Okay. Uh, tall fescue is another one. Uh, tall fescue is a bunch type grass, becoming more popular. Tall fescue uh, has a little coarser leaf, but the new varieties that keep coming out are getting better and better. And the biggest advantage that uh, tall fescue has is that it's a good choice for sites that have a lot of traffic and a low level of maintenance. That's a test question, by the way. Mm -hmm. A lot of traffic, low level of maintenance. Yep. Uh, good for areas that have a uh, high heat, drought, and wear. Okay, good. So, preparation for uh, preparation for planting seeds. Uh, the book will tell you that it should you should turf grass planting beds should be worked to a depth of at least six inches by plowing, rototilling, or disking. Six inches by plowing, rototilling, or disking. Is that important? Yep, that's gonna be on the test. That's gonna be on the test. All right. Okay, and then it also talks about uh, the seedlings, uh, how we should take care of them. Um, it talks about- Gotta interrupt for a okay. second. We're on page 34, if you're following along. Okay. Um, it talks about, uh, with the new seedlings, how uh, light watering two or three times a day for uh, the first three or four weeks should be adequate. So watering two to three to, excuse me, watering two to three times a day for three to four weeks. Now think about that. That's why a lot of seedlings fail, isn't it? Yep. Um, and then it also states that the best time to plant your seedlings is uh, in the fall time. Okay. Okay. That makes sense because... If you plant in the fall, we're not worried about weeds, so we let the grass get growing, and if we plant in the spring, we want to put pre-emergence yeah. out, and if we plant in the spring, we can't put pre-emergence out, so we're going to fight weeds all summer long. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then, it, also with seeds, uh, we do lay down sod. Uh, sod should be uh, thoroughly watered as soon as possible after it is laid. Uh, daily watering for the next two or three weeks provides adequate moisture uh, for the rooting period. Okay, good. Mowing, fertilizing, and irrigating are important ongoing considerations to determine health figure. It's getting kind of dry in here, isn't it? <laughs> Sorry, but uh, quality turf grass requires regular mowing. And the general rule is you don't want to mow off more than a third of the leaf blade. And that applies to all, all cultivars, all species. And in the book, they'll talk about 
turf grass, Kentucky bluegrass should be mowed from two and a quarter to three and a quarter inches. And that's a test question. Two and a quarter to three and a quarter inches. Cutting grass too short weakens the turf and increases its susceptibility to disease, drought, all kinds of problems. Look, I'm gonna tell you, when you're not doing this test, when you're doing lawns, get people to mow at the highest setting you possibly can. Go out and set their mower at the highest setting and tell them not to move it. And get them to mow at the highest setting. And let me tell you an example. We were at the University of Nebraska at Lincoln. They've got a brand new turf research area. Two years ago, it was a plowed field. And so we're out there on this, this beautiful grass and they can't put any pesticides on it because it's their research area. It can't have pesticides on it, right? There's no crabgrass. It's, it's beautiful. And it's mowed at three and a half to four inches. And that's really the secret. Mm -hmm. Again, that thick grass, push out the weeds. Pushes out the weeds. So, mow it at the highest setting and no more than a third of the leaf blade. And one last thing, in Iowa, uh, the Iowa Waste Reduction and Recycling Act of 1986, could be on the test, requires or prohibits certain material from being disposed in landfills. And this includes yard, wa yard waste and grass clippings. So, tell your customers, you don't need to collect the clippings. So, talks in there about when you want to start mowing. And when, when do you come up with there? Uh, when we want to start mowing, uh, when it's 50 percent higher than the desired height. Okay. So, you want to get it a little taller and then mow it the first time. Is yep. what they're saying. Yep. Uh, and it also talks about uh, fertilization is important to the production of healthy, uh, dense, stand of turf grass that can resist weeds and co recover quickly from disease and insect injury. That's kind of what we were talking about. They're, they'll talk in there that there's three to four fertilizer applications each year, whereas a low maintenance lawn might receive two applications per year. Each fertilizer application is the equivalent to one pound of nitrogen per thousand square feet. That's kind of a lot. That's kind of a lot. That's not that way anymore. But on the test, they haven't changed that, so stay with it. <laughs> uh, does it, we, we talk in here that uh, cool spring and fall weather, we're fine in rain. But uh, turf grass areas that, that are brown and dormant in the summer may look unattractive and usually recover with the return of cool weather. You found that to be true, haven't you? Yes, I've seen that. A lot of people complain about a little browning during the, the summer, and then I just encourage them to water it more, and during this uh, fall time, it usually looks a lot better. Problem is that in, in the summer, they don't water enough. They need to water just as the grass starts to show signs of wilting, and general rule is to water deeply and infrequently. The sandy soils need to receive between one to two inches of water per week. That's sandy soils, not sand soils. Um, otherwise, we recommend watering about one inch per, per week. week. Yep. And in, in well, we don't need to add about Sioux City. We've got a lot of different soil types here. We've got sand soils and we've got clay soils. Clay needs about one inch a week. Sandy soils need at least one to two inches per week. Preferably water in the morning to midday. So, talk about thatch. Uh, thatch. Thatch is a tightly intermingled layer of living and dead stems, leaves, roots of grasses that develops. Uh, uh, what's that really mean? Um, basically, it's just a kind of a layer that sits on your grass that it doesn't allow uh, moisture and sunlight to get to. So, so it's that stuff that if you've got new plants, you see, you look down and you see the dirt, right? Mm -hmm. It's that stuff that you see on the, an established lawn that is, is between the the plant and the soil. Okay, so that's kind of 
material, dead dead grass and whatnot. Spongy little bit. Spon how, how deep can that be? Um, it talks about that we don't want to thatch any higher than a half inch. Is that on the test? Yes, that will be on the test. Half inch is on the test. Okay. How do we remove thatch? Uh, vigorous hand raking or a power driven dethatching machine. So power rake. Power rake. Okay. Uh, does does uh, leaving the clippings lay make the thatch deeper? Uh, that I'll help you out. It doesn't. It doesn't. Uh, the The main thing that the thatch comes from is is all the other stuff, and leaving the clippings lay doesn't seem to make the thatch get thicker. Okay, so it's good. I'm going to talk about soil compaction a little bit here, too. Uh, you worked with that a little bit. You saw soil compaction. Soil compaction, we're talking about aerating the lawn to mm -hmm. get rid of it, right? Yep. Um, a lot of the times I noticed that um, when I noticed they needed the aeration is their, their yard will be, like, their ground will be super hard. Um, it seems like uh, the grass isn't able to grow in certain areas. Like, maybe it'll be on, like, a little hill because all the, the rain runoff. Um, so... Getting it aerated uh, helps it get moisture and um, air to the roots, and it also helps with the planting okay. of the seed. Yeah, getting reducing compaction really helps. Uh, if you think about some of the soils that, you know, if you if you've never done anything to your lawn, it tends to get compacted, right? Mm -hmm. If you walk on it, you mow it, rain, rain, everything just gets it more and more compacted, and somehow you've got to reduce that compaction so that the roots can get it in deeper. Mm -hmm. And I noticed that it helps a lot. It helps a lot. Page 36. So, did we mention that a, did we mention that tall fescue is a good grass for high, high, high traffic, low maintenance areas? Yep. We did. Okay, good. Did we mention that excessive shade can be a problem? Uh, excessive shade, I, I did notice that when I was out there, like if they would have like a picnic table or something, the excessive shade underneath the picnic table, the grass would be a different color. And what, what about under maple trees? Uh, under maple trees, it seems like there's not hardly any grass. It seems like it's just kind of dirt. Dirt, dirt. And that would be excessive shade, wouldn't it? Mm hmm And scouting for turf grass pests should be done regularly. Right? Yep, and that's uh, not only our responsibility, but the homeowner's responsibility right. too. Accurate identification of pests helps. Uh, keeping track of the numbers of pests. So if somebody calls up and says, I found a grub, yep. is that a problem? Uh, depends on the threshold level of the pest. Okay. So one grub might not mean you have to treat the lawn. At least not for a, from a pest perspective, but mm -hmm. your customer might say, I got a grub, you treat my lawn. Yep, and then it would be their preference. Yep. So keeping accurate records and all that comes into play. They're going to talk about biological controls. We don't talk about that too much on the test, but biological controls are insects, mites, and disease organisms. Not all of them are harmful. Mm -hmm. uh, some, some. Uh, yeah, some, some actually uh, feed on other parasites. Um, so then that way that it helps that threshold level once again. Okay. Um, it talks about uh, uh, pathogens, uh, bacteria, fung fungus, uh, destroying pests, um, causing specific, specific disease. Um, biological control is the use of living organisms. Really, you could go to college for four years and study biological controls and not cover it all. And we're doing it in a paragraph here, so <laughs> it, it's there's a lot there's a lot to it. And well, let's take a break here, and when we come back, we'll talk about plant diseases. Okay. Um, should we go to the pesticide first? Well, we can cover that.